Thank you very much for the invitation and the possibility to, to speak here. My talk will be, I think, quite different than all the previous ones because as a philosopher I will rather ask questions which probably don't have clear answers and rather uh, hope for a discussion, not for presenting results. And well, just to, to begin with, uh, we can think of several possible roles of mathematical theories. I mentioned only three of them, so in mathematics, in, in other parts of mathematics and in science and well just in the external <laughs> world so to say. Uh, one is explicating concepts, the other is explana uh, explaining uh, facts or phenomena and we can think of others of course which are somehow uh, connected. Uh, we can think of the role of mathematics in the context of discovery and of, of different roles of course. And we can think of these uh, possible uh, roles in several areas and here I mention three which seem very natural and very important. One is uh, the role of mathematical theories. In particular we can ask questions about the possible roles of category theory in, in mathematics itself. So what role, explanatory role, explicatory role uh, could possibly uh, category theory play in mathematics, the other is physics and we can also ask whether it could play a similar role in, in any sense of that word in, in metaphysics. Well perhaps I should have only mentioned ontology as this is, this is the, most, the most important philosophical discipline of course and we are in the center for formal ontology but we can also ask a general question about philosophy. So and of course others but I will concentrate off on these three. The first just a few words about explicating concepts with the use of, of mathematical well, concepts and tools and theories. Just a few examples, I will not speak about it only to give a, to remind it. Well this is a general procedure of uh, well, let's say conceptual recasting or re redefining or representing or whatever of a vague notion with a more precise notion. It's not always uh, formally defined. Examples are abundant. For example, well, the classical example of, of explicating the notion of chance as probability or the rate of change in the intuitive and naive way but, uh, as a derivative or a valid argument as formal proof or an infinitesimal probably uh, as a non-standard element and so on and so on. So this is a moment when we try to, to, well, to replace concepts, notions by different notions. And uh, the main question here is what could explaining mean? And well, in a sense, this is perhaps not, not a talk about the uh, explanatory role of category theory, but might be also interpreted as a talk about the question what could explaining mean if we ascribe such a role to category theory, so in a sense that are dual problems. Uh, well, intuitively we can think of several well, ideas what explaining could possibly mean. Perhaps a very natural answer for a mathematician would be to give a proof. So if we have a fact and we ask why is this so, we give a proof and that's all. Some people would say there's no other reasonable notion of, of explaining in mathematics. We could think of several uh, aspects well, to give a motivation in the sense to show that some a notion is important, well, to immerse whatever it means, the fact, into a broad uh, context, uh, to present a conceptual recasting, to provide a better understanding, etc., etc., maybe to use new techniques maybe to give an axiomatic version of an already pre-existent theory, maybe to try to unify several notions within one framework. And uh, I don't have a ready answer. I think all, all these and many other uh, ideas somehow relate to the notion of explanation, but probably they don't exhaust it. Uh, well, Someone might say that the notion of explanation is, doesn't make any sense, but 
I think there are many important notions uh, in philosophy and in philosophy of mathematics in particular, which are not easy to handle, which are perhaps very, even very elusive, vague. But I think they, we have some intuitions which somehow, well, grasp their meanings. For example, the importance of a theorem, yes, or the depth of the proof. I think this is an important notion, but there is no easy description what that could possibly mean, or the naturalness of a notion or of a definition that some notion must be defined in that way because this is the only natural way to do so, for example. But what does it exactly mean, or the coherence of a theory? And one of these uh, elusive notions is probably the notion of explanation in mathematics, and I think it's interesting to examine, even if it's not so easy to, to grasp. And we can ask the question whether uh, category theory can have such an explanatory role in mathematics. And of course there is one uh, obvious remark that uh, it's obvious that it gives new results and new concepts and new tools, etc. So perhaps the answer, the first answer could be, well, it's, it's of course it has such a role and it can uh, explain because it provides new insights, it gives new theorems, it gives new concepts, etc. But we could also ask the question whether there are examples of mathematical facts, well, phenomena, theorems, which cannot be explained without category theory. So this is a question about a kind of, well, indispensability of category theory in its explanatory role. And what is important, but this is a general remark, it applies not only to category theory, certainly, it applies to, to, to set theory and other foundational theories, that, that these facts uh, must not be, well, artifacts of, of category theory. Yeah, so, well, it's, as I said, it applies to set theory as well. Uh, we ask the question whether there are some, so to say, pre-existent mathematical facts from undergraduate mathematics and also graduate mathematics, but not in a set theoretical setting or category theoretical setting, but that require categorical theoretical, uh, category theoretical tools and notions to explain them. Yes? So this is, this is perhaps the question, of course. You might ask, what is exactly previously known? and etc. and it's not uh, so... S but I think this is clear enough. Uh, well, of course, if we try to, to, to justify such, such a skeptical thesis, we might uh, give a counter-argument that, well, as I already said, new notions are created and new results are obtained, etc. Uh, the second, perhaps uh, more interesting argument is that uh, category theory can give some conceptual insight, many conceptual insights of a deep character into what mathematics is. Uh, gives a way of reinterpreting, so to say, of understanding mathematical notions. And here, in a sense, we inherit some conceptual structure of category theory to handle, uh, so to say, the everyday mathematical notions. I know that for most of you, the everyday notion is of a functor and category, etc. But for most of the so-called working mathematicians, it probably isn't the case. But, well, the counter, uh, counter argument, again, is there any kind of indispensability? And another one, are all these new results, which are abundant, of course, really explanations of some, uh, of some um, mathematical phenomena? Because we wouldn't probably say that every new result is a kind of, of explanation. Just a remark about creating new concepts. There are two extremes probably. Uh, one of them is that new, important, fruitful, insightful, etc. Uh, valuable concepts are uh, introduced and results are uh, obtained. And another extreme uh, is that there is some kind of a strange formalism which produces some artifacts which are not very, in, or which are technically perhaps interesting, but they are not uh, 
in any interesting way applicable outside of that particular branch. Yes? So someone might say they even uh, rather obscure the problem and not provide any valuable insights. And I think that you can think of examples of, uh, of both these processes and also of these uh, processes in mathematics and maybe in, in category theory as well. I think it applies to, to most or perhaps to all branches of mathematics that such things might, might happen. Uh, now, the second uh, area is uh, mathematical application explanations in physics. Well, the question is whether there are any, I mean, really mathematical. So, not applications where mathematical, not explanations where mathematical notions are used, because it's obvious that there are many, but in any way, uh, genuinely mathematical uh, explanations. Just think of some very simple data to explain, they are not very uh, difficult. Why has this stone fallen down or why has the explosion occurred or why are there exactly seven equilibria in a, in a system, in a dynamical system or what is the underlying physical mechanism or for example why is quantum gravity so difficult. It's also a, a problem but I think we've got the feeling that this is a little bit different than uh, this one. Yeah? Uh, why are some models not satisfying, even if they are formally uh, mm, correct and maybe even if they are empirically uh, they corroborate, so to say, with the data. Very simple examples of explanations which we might call mathematical. Uh, why is it not possible to cross the famous system of bridges in Königsberg? Well, uh, simple explanation is in graph theory. Why is there always some percent of empty space left when we put balls in a box? I don't remember the exact uh, percentage, but uh, well, it is Kepler's conjecture, now Kepler's theorem. We would say, well, it's the case because we've got some mathematical result that the ordinary packing is just the best one optimal one and this is the explanation. Uh, why have all the programmers failed? For example, because the halting problem is unsolvable. Why are all these algorithms so slow? Well, well, of course, this is not an answer we would already accept probably as this uh, problem has not been solved. But someone might say, well, okay, it, there is no formal proof, but there is strong evidence. After all, we have also assumed several things even to uh, prove, uh, for example, commutativity of multiplication in, uh, in arithmetic. Under certain axiomatization, we need induction, so we can just take this new uh, axiom. I don't know whether that would be a reasonable choice, but there is that's a possibility. So the problem is whether there are some physical facts which could be explained, uh, which cannot be explained without category theory. And again, this is not, this should not be an artifact. And again, it applies to all other theories, also to set theory. Uh, so uh, this is just a repetition of the former question, is there any interesting question which uh, has been asked before and which, is, uh, which, which had no explanation and only with the help of category theory we can explain it. And again, there, we might counter this uh, suspicion that there are no by uh, observing that uh, there are new results, new notions. We have uh, we've heard many examples. And this is the way uh, any theory, in particular category theory, enters into this way of uh, providing conceptual insights and of explaining. This is the, another argument. It produces new models. They might be exotic, in, not in the formal sense of uh, exotic differential structures, but uh, in the intuitive sense. They are strange, whatever that means, but even if they are very strange, they give some understanding of 
uh, their notions. Just like someone might say that strange non-standard models for arithmetic perhaps provide some understanding of what natural numbers are in this sense. And uh, the last uh, area is the possible application and the possible explanatory uh, force of category theory in, in philosophy. And here in philosophy of mathematics. And I think that there are some at least inspirations for some questions which are uh, of course philosophical questions, not formal questions, but category theory offers some kind of, of conceptual tools to handle them or perhaps of inspirations to provide uh, some particular answers. For example, what is the nature of mathematical objects is? And we might think of several uh, answers. Uh, two of them are a kind of object realism when we ascribe some, so to say, uh, immanent uh, or some, some properties which are inherent to the object, so to say, per se, or we can think of them only in the context of a structure. So this would be the, the view of, 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 a, of one of the kinds of structuralism. And it seems that uh, that category theory at least suggests uh, this view. Uh, do they form one collection? Well, the, the term collection is certainly vague because I didn't want to, to say one set or one class or one category because it would already, in a sense, solve the, or presuppose an answer. So do they form one collection or, or, or perhaps not? Uh, perhaps uh, there's not one single universe, perhaps there are many multiverses. This is discussed in set theory. We, we might think also of of a static view of the universe versus a dynamic view. And even if we think of it as a kind of, well, metaphors, because uh, dynamic not in the sense that it's growing and since uh, in the last five minutes it, there has been an enormous progress in that growth, of course, but uh, in the conceptual sense, such uh, like, for example, well, Cermelo was speaking about growing uh, universes, models of set theory in perhaps a metaphorical way, but it expresses some intuition, which is important, I think. Why is there a feeling, at least, of the unity of mathematics? Because I think this is an empirical fact, that there is a feeling that mathematics is one subject, not 20 or 200 uh, different subjects. What are the most important mathematical notions? What is analogy in mathematics? Well, I think again that category theory could provide some uh, insights and maybe it provides some insights. Of course, the notion of analogy is not a mathematical notion. And perhaps the uh, proper uh, well, explication is the notion of isomorphism or maybe of a functor or something else. What is analogy in general? This is a general question outside philosophy of mathematics. How do mathematical notions carry over to other, uh, are applied? What does it mean exactly to another discipline? So, again, coming back to the, as I told, dual questions. One is whether category theory has any explanatory force. This is one question, of course, connected with the question what do we mean by explaining? So what would we expect of such a thing as explaining in order to, uh, to, to, to give an answer to that question? If we assume, for example, that, well, the first assumption is that the notion of explanation makes sense at all. If it doesn't make sense, uh, all these questions also do not make sense. But if it makes sense, and if we assume that category theory indeed has some of, of these virtues, has such uh, power, so to say, that it provides some explanations uh, of within mathematics or in physics or in category theory or, 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 or in uh, philosophy, 
So we asked the question, what exactly do we mean by explaining what it could possibly mean? The finance of it. So, uh, I would suppose tentatively, or maybe provocatively, that it has rather a limited uh, explanatory power within mathematics itself and within physics itself, but it has uh, some uh, explanatory, perhaps even a great explanatory power in metaphysics, philosophy, ontology, and so on. But I think it also uh, depends on the answer to the uh, question which of mathematical or physical questions are really philosophical questions. Because I think that, well, if we consider some, let's say, meta-theoretical properties of some models, physical models, I'm not a physicist and I, I'm not able to say whether these are really physical questions or maybe whether they are really conceptual questions concerning some formal properties of theories and I'm not able to solve it and I don't think that there is one single answer but I think that well if we consider if we conceive that problem in this way so uh, the question is perhaps not exactly whether category theory has such powers but rather what really is explanation and uh, well in what ways could the results contribute to our understanding? Thank you very much for attention.